All right, so tell me this. What if I were to tell you that inside this fruit, there's a compound that might actually help to slow aging by removing damaged cells from inside your body? Sounds like sci-fi, right? But stick with me because this isn't just wishful thinking. This is real science. They're called senescent cells, or also known as zombie cells. Over time, they pile up in your body, spewing toxic signals that drive inflammation, disease, and even aging itself. And the big question researchers are asking is, can we clear them out? And this is where fisidin comes in. So it's a natural flavonoid that's found in strawberries and that in lab studies seems to target and destroy these zombie cells. Some researchers even call it a senolytic, meaning it helps clear out cellular junk. But does it actually work in humans? And if so, how much would you need? Just a handful of strawberries or something more? Today, we're breaking down the science, the human trials, and whether fisetin really is worth adding to your longevity toolkit. Let's dive in. All right, so let's talk about these zombie cells. They're scientifically known as senescent cells. And once a cell in your body hits a certain level of damage, and this could be maybe from oxidative stress or just from living too long, they can become senescent. Instead of dying and making room for new cells, these old timers sort of go on strike. They stop functioning normally, but they still hang around spewing out these inflammatory signals. It's like having a car in the middle of the highway. So the traffic, your healthy cells, basically have to move around it, and eventually everything slows to a crawl. Over decades, you can imagine how a buildup of these parked cells could lead to chronic inflammation, frailty, and a much faster march towards disease and aging. So scientists have been searching for ways to get rid of these troublemakers. And this is where senolytics come in. These are compounds that are specifically designed to target and kill these senescent cells. And guess which humble flavonoid has stepped up to the plate in these lab tests? You guessed it, fisetin. Now fisetin isn't just found in strawberries. It's found in things like apples and persimmons and onions, although not in nearly the same concentrations. But don't get too excited just yet. Food alone will not supply anywhere near the doses that the researchers are using in these laboratory and clinical studies. We're talking milligrams to grams of fisetin in those experiments, whereas a whole cup of strawberries may give you a grand total of a few dozen milligrams at best. So why not just eat a giant tub of strawberries? You'd likely have to eat pounds of them in order to reach the even the lower thresholds that are used in the senolytic research. It's not particularly practical. And so that's where the experiments come in. But let's take a step back and see what the science is telling us about fisetin's actual powers. So back in 2018, a pivotal study tested whether several plant compounds had an ability to kill these senescent cells. So fisetin really stood out as the most potent. In old mice, giving them even short pulses of high-dose fisetin really helped to lower these markers of senescence in the fat tissue, uh, liver, even blood vessels. And here's the showstopper. It extended both the median and the maximum lifespan in these mice. Researchers like Dr. James Kirkland at the Mayo Clinic have done a lot of the heavy lifting there. They're the ones behind some of these big trials, but they're not alone. Teams at the University of Minnesota, the Buck Institute, and even the Salk Institute have contributed as well. And the big question is, will these results translate to humans? So human data, while it's limited, is beginning to emerge. In one trial, colorectal cancer patients were given 100 milligrams of fisetin daily with their chemotherapy treatment. So what they found was after seven weeks, that group on fisetin actually had lower inflammation markers like interleukin-8 as well as CRP when compared to the placebo group. And that's a real sign of biological activity in humans. Another small study looked at stroke patients getting the traditional clot-busting medication we use in the emergency department, TPA. What they found is that adding fisetin actually seemed to extend the window in which these treatments remained effective, meaning patients treated up to five hours post-stroke had similar outcomes to those treated within the standard three hours. And so this is a huge potential if that could replicate in larger cohorts. And we also have ongoing trials. So there's one on frailty called the Affirm trial at the Mayo Clinic. Additionally, there's trials looking at diabetic kidney disease, and even one looking at the virus from the recent pandemic in nursing home patients. And the researchers hope that by clearing out these zombie cells, you can really reduce the inflammatory storms in older adults. The results aren't all in yet, but so far the safety has been good. And there really haven't been any major side effects that have popped up in these hydros protocols. So the early signs are pretty encouraging, but we still need those large uh, definitive human studies that can confirm that fisetin can really tangibly slow aging or reduce disease risk in, in the typical healthy older adult.
Now let's compare some of these sun analytics in a way that may help it to make more sense. So first picture Desatinib. It's a potent chemotherapy drug, and it's also used in this D plus Q senolytic combo. It's like taking a massive sledgehammer to a tree stump. It's super powerful. But if you're not careful, you might smash some nearby healthy plants in the process. You risk side effects like low platelets or immune suppression. Fisetin, on the other hand, is more like a carefully honed chisel. It's designed to remove these unwanted material or these zombie cells, but with a lighter, more controlled touch. The big advantage is fewer side effects. Because fisetin is a dietary flavonoid, it's not a chemo drug, so it appears to be much safer in the preliminary studies. However, does that chisel approach really remove every type of senescent cell with its same brute force? Maybe not. And so that's why some researchers are wondering if combining fisetin with other heavy-duty senolytics could help to cover all the bases. For now, fisetin stands out as a promising single-agent senolytic that's simpler, cheaper, and apparently gentler. So all of this gets people really excited, and reasonably so. They hear things like, fisetin can help to extend lifespan in mice, and they want to jump on the bandwagon. But we need to talk practicality as well as safety. So in the Mayo Clinic's trials, they're using 20 milligrams per kilogram of body weight taken for two consecutive days. So that's basically about 1,400 milligrams per day for the typical 70 kilogram adult. This is much higher than the 100 milligrams you may see on a lot of supplement bottles. And for this dose, they give it, you know, once a month or once every few months. And it's this idea of kind of like a hit and run senolytic therapy. You don't need daily use. Just swoop in, kill those zombie cells, and then allow your body to recover. So far, fisetin, it appears to be remarkably safe. Studies haven't reported any serious adverse effects, even at these high doses. The biggest complaints may be mild GI upset or headache. And of course, we don't have data on year after year repeated high dose usage in thousands of people yet. That's why the experts really advise caution. If you're older or with significant health issues, especially if you're on multiple medications, you should definitely talk to your doctor first. And here's another twist. So fisetin, like many plant polyphenols, has really low oral bioavailability. This means if you swallow a fisetin pill, a lot may never make it into your bloodstream. Researchers are fighting with some special formulations, liposomal fisetin, or fenugreek fiber-bound fisetin, or fisetin nanoemulsions. These advanced versions can yield as much as a 25 times higher blood level than the same dose of plain powder. That's one reason the Mayo trials often use such high doses. They assume most of the fisetin is lost to your metabolism. So if you're taking an enhanced formulation, you might actually be able to achieve the same blood concentration with fewer milligrams. So read your labels or check with your brain to see if they've done any absorption studies. No matter what, consider taking fisetin with a meal that contains some healthy fats. That can boost absorption a bit more. Now, I love strawberries as much as the next person. They're delicious, they're a great source of vitamin C, and they're also packed with these compounds called anthocyanins that actually support cardiovascular health. But you would have to eat about one to two pounds of strawberries in a single sitting to get a fraction of the senolytic dose that's used in research. So eating fisetin-enriched foods definitely contributes to overall health. But if your goal is specifically to reach the zombie cell killing threshold, a supplement is the more practical way to go. We still encourage a diet full of colorful fruits and vegetables. And you can think of that as kind of like building a strong foundation. And then if you're on board with the senolytic strategy, you can add an occasional high dose of fisetin as a cleanup crew. Now, in terms of ongoing research, there's a lot happening in real time. So first, the Affirm trial is testing whether fisetin can actually improve frailty and inflammation in older women. There's another trial that's testing whether giving high doses of fisetin to nursing home residents who have a mild case of the virus from the, the pandemic, if they're able to help to prevent more severe disease. And there's even the stop sepsis trial in older adults with serious infections. And the hypothesis there is that by clearing out these senescent cells, it may dampen those runaway inflammatory storms. Now, most of these trials are still ongoing, and so we don't have that final data yet. But if the results are positive, we could see fisetin become more of a mainstream geriatric medicine. And if it turns out only met or helpful for certain people with high levels of senescent cells, that's also extremely valuable knowledge. And hey, sometimes negative results actually guide us towards better strategies. Now, I know many of you are thinking, so should I go out and buy some fisetin capsules right now? So let me be completely transparent. First, the potential is huge. There are multiple animal studies that have shown real anti-aging effects like improved tissue health, reduced inflammation, and even extended lifespan. The early human trials are promising, especially for inflammation and acute conditions like stroke and maybe even certain viruses. 
Second, the safety profile looks excellent so far. So there's no serious side effects, even with high intermittent doses. And that's encouraging compared to stronger senolytics like desatinib, which can lower your blood counts. But we haven't seen any real data proving that fisetin can reverse aging in healthy humans long term. Those big results in mice, they're not guaranteed to fully translate to us. So if you're healthy and you want to dabble in a monthly senolytic blitz, think something like, you know, 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams for two days, I'd say do your homework first. Make sure you talk to a healthcare provider if you have any underlying conditions. And I would definitely keep your eye on the data from these ongoing clinical trials. It's changing rapidly. And if you prefer to wait for more definitive proof, that's completely valid as well. Now let's wrap up with some key points you can walk away with today. First, fisetin is a natural flavonoid found most richly in strawberries with potent senolytic effects in animals, meaning it kills off these problematic zombie cells that accumulate with age. Additionally, the early human trials suggest it reduces inflammation, possibly improves outcomes in stroke, with minimal side effects reported so far. The optimal dosing for senolysis is still under investigation, but clinical researchers use an intermittent high dose, somewhere around 20 milligrams per kilogram for several days, repeated monthly or so. Supplements, especially the enhanced bioavailability ones, are necessary for senolytic level doses because normal foods won't get you there. And lastly, the safety looks good, but we're still waiting on the final data from these big trials that'll confirm which populations benefit the most, how they should take fisetin, and over how many years. If you're keen on a deeper dive, I would definitely keep tabs on the ongoing Mayo Clinic studies. They're really pushing the boundaries of senolytic research. And remember, any single compound is just one piece of the longevity puzzle. Exercise, diet, sleep, stress management, and strong social connections still matter tremendously. As always, thank you for tuning in. If you found today's topic interesting, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe for more science-backed longevity deep dives. Together, we'll continue to explore in the frontiers of aging research.